Hey everybody, welcome to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with my bestie Mandy. And I'm here with my bestie Jessica. All right guys, so it's March and that means that St. Patrick's Day is coming up. So we wanted to give you 10 Irish wrecks for your St. Patrick's Day. Yay, I love Irish wrecks. Um, I like Irish in general. So before we get started with that, Mandy, what do we got to tell them? Well, you're going to want to make sure you hit that subscribe button. So if you're watching this, hit that subscribe button because you could win these Karen Crompton books. When we hit 1,000 subscribers, we will be doing our Road to 1K giveaway and all of those books right there will be our giveaway. So one lucky person is going to win all of those Karen Crompton books. So you want to make sure you're entered in that. We also have lots of other fun things planned and some more giveaways. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and a huge thank you to Karen for those yes. books for our giveaway. Yay. You can also get an extra entry by following us on Instagram. Everything you need to know is linked below. Okay. All right, Mandy. So what are you going to do on St. Patrick's Day this year? It's a Sunday. I think we have our live show that day with Amber and Jen. We do. Yeah. So don't forget to check in on that one. So, yeah. Okay. Um, are you ready to get started? Yes, let's go, Jessica. Tell us your first Irish wreck. Okay, so my first Irish wreck is one that I just read a week and a half, two weeks ago, and that is lost in my notes. Hold on, Mandy. And that is Taking Megan by Izzy Sweet and Sean Moriarty. Um, this is Mafia. A lot of mine will be. But this is about Megan and Gabriel. So Megan is a part of the Irish Mafia. Her father is um, the dawn of the Irish Mafia. And she is being forced to marry somebody from the Bratva, so from the Russian Mafia. And she doesn't want to. Like, they've drugged her up so that they can drag her down the aisle and force her to marry this guy. And then you have Gabriel, who is a part of, I think they're the Italian mafia. I could be wrong, but he's a part of a different mafia group. And he's been in prison for 10 years. And he went in, he he wasn't, I mean, like he's mafia guys. So he's not actually innocent, but he took the fall for something for his crew, for his guys. And so he's been in prison. His, um, the guy, the person in charge of his mafia got him out now and they want revenge on the Russians. And so they stormed the wedding and you know shoot it all up and that's where he finds megan and instead of like letting megan go or i don't know keeping her as prisoner he decides he's gonna marry her and keep her so but her father and the father the guy that she was gonna marry get away so there's still all that drama so loved this book so much she got our little megan she's our little irish girl what do you have for your first book Okay, my first book is called Professor's Kiss by Sienna Blake, and this is part of the Irish Kiss series. I love this book. This is about Danny and Ailish, and they meet when they're 15 and 16 in the hospital. Danny is there because his mom is really sick, and Ailish is there because she has leukemia. They form a bond, this deep friendship, and somehow it fell apart. So this is told in some flashbacks. And so we're like in present time and Danny has kind of turned like he he's turned into like a little bit of a bully. He is a musician now and he is having some serious writer's block. So he takes a position at this college, um, this prestigious music college. All of this is set in Ireland and he... <clears throat> is going to be like a guest like professor or something like that and Ailish has just been offered a scholarship for her final year to this prestigious college so she's very excited to be there but she is on a scholarship and when she gets there she finds out that her professor is also Danny and so he's kind of turned into a little bit of bully towards her. There's definitely some chemistry, but he's struggling with his feelings. And she's kind of struggling with like how he basically just kind of abandoned her when they were kids. And 
I love this book, and I have to tell you one of my favorite lines from it, Jessica. So he is a little jealous, but he's not, he's like trying to deal with his feelings, you know, how guys can be. And there's this other guy sitting next to her, and he says, the lad sitting next to, a next to Alice, Alish, excuse me, stood up. I'd forgotten his name already, so let's just call him Pencil Dick. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Um, so, I have to say that Ailish is one of my favorite Irish names. I love that name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to have another kid just to name her Ailish, but my husband won't let me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a great, you know, there's a little bit of forbiddenness with the whole student teacher aspect. And then there's, you know, the wonderful Irish setting. You have some angst, you have some heartbreak happening, mm -hmm. you have that kind of friends to sort of the bullying back, you know, around. So lots of stuff happening, but it doesn't feel overwhelming either. Okay. All right. What's your next Irish wreck? My next Irish wreck is Rouge by Greer River. So this is the second in her uh, Tattered and Curtain series. Uh, you can, they're, they're all standalone. So you're good to read them out of order. But this one is about Lacey and Keen. So Lacey is, when the book starts out, she's engaged to marry the Baron. So this is a Romeo and Juliet and a, a Moulin Rouge, whatever the, the, uh, the play Moulin Rouge is based off of. It is a reimagining of those two combined. So she is scheduled, or like she's supposed to be marrying the Baron, who is this guy in Vegas who kind of rules over everything. And she had been engaged to Keen at one point in time. It was an arranged marriage situation, uh, but her dad broke it off because of things that happened. But Keen has like never, like he's always wanted her and he's seen the like he's, he stalks her, he cyber stalks her. He does, what he, you know, what every good man would do. And uh, so he's not giving up. So this is, when we start out, she is, um, it's the night of her bachelorette party. And so she goes to a strip club with her friend and someone she really doesn't like, but she has to take her because she's being watched. And uh, Keen is actually on stage. She doesn't realize it's Keen. And uh, he ends up taking her from the strip show to someplace where he gets her drugged up and he marries her but she's still engaged to the baron so there's all that going on so this is not mafia this is like secret society kind of situation but keen has that irish brogue if you read this i listened to the audio because mm, that was that was hot um see we're even getting a thumbs up here so definitely listen to this one over reading it i would say because man mm, yeah Keen was hot. Keen was hot. I was actually just looking. She signed this book when we were in Vegas and it says dance like Keen. Um, like dance like Keen is watching. And I'm like, yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. Next. That book was also featured in our retelling video. It was. You read that one. I did. Mm -hmm. Okay. My next book is called Unfixable by Tessa Bailey. This is about Willa, who has recently um, gone through a breakup and she wins this contest. So she gets to go to Ireland. So she grabs her camera because photography is kind of her big thing. And she heads to Ireland. She gets to the inn and this is where she meets Shane. And so her purpose is that she's had this breakup. She wants to try and get back to herself. So kind of a self-discovery trip, but also she feels like she used to be a lot more spunky, a little, you know, snarky, more independent. And so she's looking to find herself, like her true self again. And Shane is back in his hometown trying to fix up this inn and set his mom and sister up after his dad passed away. He has no desire to be there. He just wants to get this taken care of and get back because he's a Formula One racer and he really, really just wants to go back to racing. He like has little time or patience for anything else. And then here's Willa in his orbit and he's drawn to her a little bit, but how does this work? Like she's here just temporarily and he wants to get back to racing. So, and she's also does not want to lose herself again. 
she's trying to find herself. So lots of stuff is going on in this book with the two characters as they try and work out some attraction they're feeling to each other. Really enjoyed it. A good book. Okay. You like All that right. Irish setting. Yeah. Yep. All right. Okay. So my next book that I have is Finn by BJ Alpha. Now here's the deal. You could read any book in her Secrets and Lies um, series because these guys are all Irish. They're all Irish mafia. They don't necessarily have the Irish brogue, but their dad does. And we see him quite a bit in the books. Uh, but this is one of my favorites out of the series. They can all be, they can be read out of order. Um, but we have Finn here. Finn was in love with Angel um, ever since they were little kids, they were together a lot. And so they were absolutely in love. They were going to, he was going to get out of the mafia. He was going to, you know, they were going to run off and make a life for themselves. But he joined up the army, to, joined up in the army to like be able to establish that. When that happens, this happened nine years before the, our story starts, Angel disappears uh, before he comes home. And he has never heard from her. He's looked for her for years, but he could not find her. And he gets a call one night from a hospital in, I think, the neighboring state saying that there is a Chelsea there who has him listed as next of kin. And she's been in a car accident and they need him to come to the hospital. At first, he thinks it's a mistake. And so he's like, or a prank. And he's like, yeah, right. Uh, but after the third or fourth call, he finally takes it. And he goes to the hospital and that is where he finds Angel. She is on the run. She is going by Chelsea. She has changed her appearance and he's like, okay, well, what's going on here? And yeah, um, I'm coming home with you and you're mine now. I'm not leaving your side at all. So let's figure this out. Love this whole series. Finn, Finn definitely has a breeding kink. So I'm just putting him out there. He was hot. I love Finn. He is, oh, mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This one. Finn okay. and Bryn, they're my favorites. Okay. So my next book is The Filthy Disciple, and this is a crossover book, and it's written by Cassandra Robbins and Serena Ackroyd. And <clears throat> this is about Cade, and Cade is hired by the Irish Mafia to go rescue Cindy slash Isabel from the MC. And so Cade goes to do what he's told to do and he gets there and he realizes, so he's, the Irish Mafia is doing, is having him do this as a favor to this doctor. And the doctor is wanting his daughter, who's being held, he said, claims the daughter's being held against her will by this MC club, and they've got her all messed up, and he just really, you know, wants her, his daughter back. So they go ahead and, you know, they've hired Cade. Cade goes out there. So Cade believes he's rescuing this girl from this horrific MC. And what turns out is that maybe the doctor is not the good guy that they think he is. And Cindy really doesn't need rescuing, but Cade has already put everything in motion before he starts to figure that out. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So the next book that I have is, yep, that's the right one. <laughs> Binding Rose. This is by Ivy Fox. This is the first book in the Mafia Wars series. So this is a series of, I want to say it's five or six books all written by different authors, but they're all in the same world. And so the premise, the start of this is that all of these Mafia heads came together nine years prior or 10 years prior to the book starting. And they sat down at this table and they wanted to have peace between all of the different, not the Irish, all the different Mafia groups and the way that they did that decided to do that was through marriage so in 10 years time like they all put all the girls' names all of them had daughters so all the girls names go into a bowl and then it's pulled out um and that's who your i think it's mostly the sons nobody's really old in this so mostly the sons are gonna end up marrying uh 10 years down the road 
And so that is where we start out with this book. We have Rose, who is the cartel princess, and she is being sold off or married off into the Irish mafia. So these boys, now this is reverse harem, why choose? There are three guys to the one girl. Uh, she is being told that these boys are ruthless. She's only marrying one of them, by the way, but they're absolutely ruthless and that she needs to get pregnant right away and give them a baby. And then her brothers will get her out uh, within a few years, but it is imperative that she gets pregnant. And so she goes to them knowing what she has to do, but what do you do when the man you married won't sleep with you because of things? So you have our Irish mafia boys here and your cartel princess. I love this book. I love this series. I shouldn't say I love several books in the series. Some didn't work, but some were great. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Well, for my next book, I'm taking us back to the Irish Kiss series. And this is Fighter's Kiss by Sienna Blake. So we have River who has had a previous relationship with her boss. She lives in New York and things kind of implode in her face and she realizes like being involved with her boss was probably not the best idea she's ever had. She's kind of a, a little bit hippie-ish is how she's described, very carefree. And so she ends up very desperate and needing a job. And so she takes a job to be um, Declan's assistant. Declan, so she's moving clear across the ocean, across the pond, I think, as people call it, to Ireland. And she's going to be Declan's assistant. Declan is an Irish fighter, and his life has also imploded. He was in an accident, and he <clears throat> had a wife who was cheating on him, and he's trying to get his body back in shape even though he's in horrific pain from this accident to become the fighter that he once was because his wife cheated on him with one of his opponents and he really just wants to take this guy down in the cage. So Declan is hurting and he can be kind of an ass. And so there's major conflict between our two characters, Declan and River, because of this. And she's a little like, weary because of things that have also happened in her past so you know we go from there okay. very good if you like right. the mma world mm -hmm. you like a hero who has like his who's very guarded but kind of acts like an ass because of it like that we like yeah i know this yeah. is this is the book for you. <laughs> I really I really wish she had hers on audio because it would be awesome to hear the Irish brogue with all of that, you know? That's what yeah. I like about. Yeah. So but she doesn't yet. So okay. So um we couldn't do an Irish video without having this book on it. So that is Irish by Brittany Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, duh. So this is Mafia. I know like 90%. I think all, all we're all my mafia. Yeah, whatever. It's all good. That's the best way to find it. It's okay. Obviously, I like Mafia. Uh, but this is also Mafia. It, it's more about the relationship than it is about the Mafia aspects of it. But this is Frank and Eleanor. Eleanor calls him Irish. He calls her Ellie. So that's where the Irish is coming from. But Frank is a part of the Irish Mafia. And um, Ellie grows up in the Italian Mafia. And they met each other when they were young and they, you know, she was absolutely in love with him, but circumstances and things happened and he is taken away. And then a few years later, she finds out that he is killed. And so when all of this happens, she actually is forced to marry somebody in the Italian mafia. And she does that, but he is horrible to her and he beats her. And she, you know, when the book really gets going, she's a mom of two and her husband uses her sister uh, as black, like he blackmails her into doing the things that he wants her to do in order to protect her sister. Cause he's like, he threatens to marry her off to some, this big nasty guy in the mafia. And so one night, so, so she's out there, she's, she's actually a serial killer. She serial kills for her husband. And so one night she gets a phone call that, or one day she gets a phone call that she has inherited this property 
And she decides to take her kids and her sister and run. When they do, they get to the property. And lo and behold, Irish is sitting there waiting for her. And she obviously freaks out because she thinks he's dead. So this is their story. It, it really, really focuses on their relationship and her coming to terms with what she had to do to protect her family. But, oh, man, this was so good. I loved it so much. So, yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay. So what's your last one? This, this is my last one. It's our last rec, right? Yep. Okay. It is Chasing River by K.A. Tucker. This is about River and Amber. So Amber, oh, I forgot to switch over. I'm just going to start going. <laughs> Amber is um, a, a good girl. Her dad's the sheriff, and she's always just tried really hard to do the right thing. And just is your typical, you know, heroine that is a good girl. And she's a nurse. She's saved up pay, and she is now on a traveling adventure bucket list and so she starts off in Ireland and she's there sightseeing when this guy kind of comes out of nowhere tackles her and she's like what is going on right as a bomb goes off and she realizes that he just saved her like if he had not done this she would have been either killed or seriously hurt and before she can actually properly thank him he takes off and then the police or the Gerard as a Gerard how do it's not guard, but it's like pronounced guard. Like that's the best way I can get the closest I can get to it. The police over there. Right. Mm -hmm. sure. So <clears throat> they show up and then a cop, like a little bit later, she's still sightseeing and she sees somebody wearing a t-shirt with a very um, similar symbol to what the guy who saved her had on. So she's able to track him down um, through that to his family's pub. And he really doesn't want to be found because he actually had a connection to that bomb. And he is not, like, he's had some jail time. He's very, very different from her. But yet there's still this great attraction between the two of them. And again, he had a connection to the bomb. Okay. Loved this book a lot. It was a great um, I actually listened to it, but I loved the accent for River, like the Irish accent on there was fantastic. I really enjoyed mm -hmm. the book. Yeah, I've noticed that if there's a book that has an Irish hero and the accent is done well, that like gives it like the extra star for me. I'm always like, oh, yeah, there's just something about it. So, all right, guys. So. That's what we have for your Irish St. Patrick's Day recommendations. Okay, so make sure in the comments to let us know what are some of your favorite Irish books. If you don't have one, are you going to try any of the ones that we recommended? Mm -hmm. What do you do on St. Patrick's Day? Do you yeah. do you want to read an Irish book? Do you have other <laughs> things going on? Like, tell us everything. We want to mm -hmm. hear from you. We love interacting with you guys in the comments. Or you people, I should say, not guys. So weird how guys like saying guys is just like a universal word for everyone. <laughs> yeah, I think it's more of a West Coast. Is that Coast everywhere or is that just from where you and I are from? <laughs> it's it's more here on the West Coast, I think. Yeah, so, I've heard it is anyway. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. We love hearing from you peeps. Yes. So, comment. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and check mm -hmm. back on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for new videos from us. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. See you guys.